So the message this morning I bring to you from a conversation with my daughter. Now, I don't know if you've ever had to explain to a child the difference between being and doing. I had to have this conversation with Maya this week. And I was, that Maya is my eldest. She's seven years old. And I was teaching her the difference between being mean and doing something mean. And I told her, I was like, Maya, there are things that you are. You are a miller. You are kind. You are my daughter. You are part of this family. You are wise. You are compassionate. You are loving. You are strong. This is who you are. Now there are things that you do. Like you just push that couch. That's something you did. Like cutting a slice of bread. You did. Like being, like um, treating your sister um, unkindly. That's something you did. But whether you do something good or bad, whether you, your choice was good, you did something good or bad, it is not who you are. It is a choice you made. Again, you are a miller, which means you are kind, you are compassionate, and you are strong. And I was explaining this to her, and I told her, you have to understand that just because you made a mistake does not mean you are your mistake. You made a mistake. And it's important to know this. It's important to know this distinction. I know some of you this morning have been asking God, please, God, let this year be over. Please let 2019 be different. I need 2019 to be different. I cannot have another year like this one. I know some of you in the room are like, get this God forsaken year away from me. Finish it off. And I have a message for you this morning, because if 2018 wasn't your year, or if you need 2019 to have some significant changes, or if, you're, if you just say, you know what, it wasn't either good or bad, I just keep trying and trying and trying and trying and nothing is changing. Well, I want to encourage you this morning to lean in. Lean in with me, because this message is for you. The title of my message this morning is Becoming Holy. Now, scriptures talk about the word sanctification, which is just a church word for holy, and it talks about it over 700 times. Now, I don't know about you, but if 700 times comes up, it must mean something, right? There are nine passages in the scripture that say some variation of, be holy for I am holy. Nine. That is in Old Testament and in New Testament. Now, don't check out on me. I know that the moment I said the word holy or the moment you saw the slide, you felt really overwhelmed, a bit guilty, and you said that is just impossible. That seems like an impossible task to be holy. And I want to tell you this morning, I want to clarify it, it is. It is, if you look at holiness as a task, it is impossible to fulfill. It is not something you can check off your list. But being holy is not something you do. See, Jesus is way more concerned with who you are than what you are portraying. He's way more concerned with what's going on inside you than outside. He is concerned with the way your inner man, this state of your inner man. This is really important because people try to act holy. And often when people try to act holy, they become a lot more like Pharisees than Jesus. And a Pharisee is somebody that's legalistic and judgmental. And you know, none of us want to be legalistic and judgmental. judgmental. But if you read the scriptures really closely, you will find, or actually really quickly, you will find that Jesus repelled the Pharisees. Right? He called them hypocrites. Some of the nicer things he said about them. He called them hypocrites. And I want to take a minute this morning, though, to define what holy is. Because holiness has been complicated by the church. And it has seldomly been used outside of the church. So holiness is this term that people go like, I don't really know what it means. It just seems like I can. And you just kind of stay away from it. But holiness really just means to be consecrated to God's will. 
to be dedicated to God's work. It just means simply that holiness is a willingness to live for the one who died for you. That's what holiness is, to live for the one who died for you. It may or may not always be easy, but it's not complicated. And in fact, it isn't even something you do. And I'll prove that to you this morning. If we go to Exodus 31, verse 13, we find it. It says, say to the Israelites, you must observe my Sabbath. This will be a sign between you and me, between me and you, for the generations to come. So you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. This is the first time we see the name Jehovah, let me not mispronounce it, Makadish. Makadish. Jehovah Makadish, which means the Lord who makes holy, the Lord who sets you apart, the Lord who sanctifies you. The next time we find the, the Jehovah Makadish is in Leviticus 20, verse 8. And it says, Keep all my decrees by putting them into practice, for I am the Lord who makes you holy. I want you to notice in these two passages the theme, the Lord makes you holy. It's not saying you make yourself holy. It's not saying that. It is saying the Lord, the Lord makes you holy. And what that tells me is this, that you cannot be holy apart from God. Right? You cannot be holy. The other thing this tells me is that holiness is not something you do. It's something you be. Okay, bad English. I'll say it again. Holiness is not something I do. Holiness is who I am. Right? I know my English. Holiness is something I am. Now, for those of you that have been in church for a very long time, do you remember WWJD? Come on. What would Jesus do? Those bracelets came out in the 90s. In the 90s, they had this movement, right, called What Would Jesus Do? The WWJD movement. And although the movement may have been pure in its design and its thought process, it created a culture of people trying to behave like Jesus instead of becoming like Jesus, right? We put on these bracelets and we look at, okay, what would Jesus do now? What would Jesus do now? What would Jesus do now? But here's the problem with this train of thought. Have you ever pretended to be something you're really not? It's exhausting. It's exhausting to continually be trying to be something that's not who you really are. And I want to say something. It's really, you, it, when you are something, you don't have to ask the behavior question, right? Like, take for instance a bird. A bird doesn't say, what would a bird do? Right? Or a doctor doesn't say, what would a doctor do? See, I don't go around saying, what would a Lini do? No, I just do. I just act. It flows from who I am, right? It's embedded. It's within me. I am a Lini, so I do what a Lini does, right? Well, here's a, this is why if you, if you are Christ-like, you act Christ-like. If you are um, living that life, if you are already being that person, you don't have to ask how would that person behave, right? And so this is why the Lord says, be holy. Holiness is not a state of acting. It's a state of being. See, I, I want to talk about this attribute of, of God for a minute. Because holiness, as, we, as I was talking to J.D. about this, this aspect of God being holy, right? And it's, in fact, one of the most fundamental aspects of God. Because think about it with me. Think about holiness, right? And think about all the other, some other attributes of God. Like, we know that God is powerful. We know that God is just. We know that God is good, right? But consider for a minute power without holiness. It generates cruelty, right? Consider for a minute justice without holiness. Revenge, right? Consider even goodness without holiness. Subjective, because it might not even be good at all, right? Without the holiness of God, the holiness actually determines the other, I don't know if determines, but the holiness actually brings about the other attributes, Right? It brings together the other attributes. And the fact that the Lord is holy is one of the most important 
and magnificent aspect of God. Now, what about you? What does your life look like without holiness? What does your life look like when you are conformed to whatever you will? Remember, because holiness is being conformed to the will of God. So what does it look like when you are conformed to your will? Can I get personal for a minute? Because I just like to. Right? Some of you have been doing the same things for years now. Have been doing your own way for years now. And nothing is working. And it doesn't seem to be working in most areas. Some of you have been broke for as long as you can remember. Right? Some of you have been lonely. And no matter if you're in a relationship or not, you still feel lonely. Some of you have been struggling with depression and feeling overworked and anxiety and fear for most of your life. And you don't seem to find a way to get out of it. Well, have you considered that maybe there's a better way? Have you considered that God can change your story? Have you considered that maybe it wasn't meant to be that way? That maybe it can be different. See, God invites us into a life of holiness, a life that's set, set apart, a life that's sanctified. He desires to share this aspect of himself with us. And so he says, be holy as I am holy. We find that in 1 Peter. Be holy as I am holy. But here's the thing about God. God doesn't drop a bomb on you and then says, okay, good luck now. Go be holy. God doesn't do that. He invites us into a relationship with him in which he sets us apart, in which he makes us holy, until he does the work in us. So we don't have to try and work incredibly hard at going WWJD right now. What would Jesus do right now? Come on. What would you do, Jesus? We don't have to live that way. Now, this is not a completely passive lifestyle, right? This is not a, uh, I'm just going to sit and watch for the, the holiness to fall from heaven. <laughs> and voila, I am now holy. No, we, we don't make ourselves holy, but we do engage. We have the option to engage or not in the process of becoming holy. And so how does that happen? How do you actually become holy? Well, Jesus knew that the best way to make disciples was not to send them to seminary and say, hey, good, get, get good grades over there and then come back, okay? It's not how he did it, right? When we look at the life of Jesus, we find that he, the best way to build disciples was to have them spend time with him. Was, he said, follow me. And so the number one way to engage in becoming holy is to follow Jesus. To follow, what does that mean? Well, more is caught than taught. We've learned this. More is caught than taught. I don't know. If you have kids in the room, you know this to be true because you have little mirrors staring at you most of the day. The things that you love and don't about yourself come out in those kids because they're with you all the time. So they learn how to behave. They learn how to respond from watching you respond and behave, right? They are little magnets. Your emotions they feel your um, behaviors and actions and mannerisms they catch. Well, Jesus is essentially saying the same thing. Hey, spend time with me and you will become like me, right? You will be holy because I am holy and so it will rub off on you. And so what Jesus, what does it mean to follow Jesus? Well, there are four books in the Bible that are all about the life of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This is the days that Jesus walked on earth. This is everything he did. So following means you read that. You memorize that. You spend time thinking about it. You spend time processing it. You can't bypass the product of time. You can't bypass that. Time spent in the company of Jesus will produce holiness. Because be holy as I am holy. Right? So number one thing you do is you spend time. You listen to his words. You read his words. You meditate on his words. You memorize his words. You think, why is he doing this? You process those words that are in that book. Then the next thing you do is you respond. Now the Holy Spirit 
this inner small voice within us, right? The Holy Spirit speaks to us and wants to guide us. And he wants to um, make us into, into more like Christ too. The Holy Spirit working within us wants to make us more like Christ. So how does that work? Well, you will feel something inside. You will feel a little prompting or a little nudge or a little suggestion that a lot of people like to ignore. They like to go, no, that was just me. That was just a thought. That was, you know. But if you begin to listen to that prompting, if you begin to respond to those things inside, you will begin to look more like Jesus. He will be, use the process of what's going on and talking to you to mold you into the form of likeness of Jesus. I'll give you an example. He will say, bless that person right there with $5 because she's going off to college. Um, and you can go, no, that's just JD. Or you can say, you know what, why not? If the Lord is prompting me to give to someone else, I will do it. Then the next time the Lord will say, you see that person out there in the street? They haven't eaten in days. Give them something to eat. And you go, oh, that's just me because I'm looking at them. And no, you can respond and say, you know what? In, in, the, in the least, I did something nice. But in the best, I'm becoming more like Jesus. Right? There will be promptings. He will tell you, hey, I need you to forgive that person. No, nope, don't want to do that. No, this is the process of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, making you more like Jesus. Right? I need you to forgive that person. Then you'll hear another prompting. Hey, take that step of faith. That's scary. Yeah? But I want you to take that step because that step will lead to other things. I need you to take the one. God is not going to toss you at another location if you can't take the one step. Hey, take that step. Okay, I will take that step. See, this, these promptings, these things, these little things inside that we can easily ignore is the process of setting us apart. It is the way God will directly speak to us, and it's the process he will use to make us holy. We expect this magnificent thing to fall from heaven, and all of a sudden, all of our natural desires are gone. All of our, you know, I am holy now, and I live set apart for Jesus. And No, 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 it doesn't happen like that. It happens with step by step in the, in the walk with Jesus. It happens by getting to know how he behaves, and it happens to have responding to the conversation that's going on inside between you and the Spirit. God will directly affect, I mean, God will directly use this process, your responses, to make you holy. See, there's a letter, that, uh, um, there's a part, hmm, there's a letter to the Romans that Paul wrote and we find this verse that's very insightful. It's in Romans 6, verse 13. It says, Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. You, my friend, can be an instrument of justice of righteousness, but it is on you to offer. It is on you to offer your life, to become holy, to say, you know, I am offering my life to you, God. I am dedicating my life to you. I'll end with this. Our Jehovah Makadish wants to set you apart and has a plan and a purpose for your life. And he wants to sanctify you, to make you holy. And it's, again, it's important to know that you don't make yourself holy. He makes you holy. But he wants you to follow and respond. It is on you to follow and respond. It is on you to every morning. This is not something you do once a week. This is not a Sunday thing. It is an everyday thing. It is a daily walk with him that you wake up in the morning and you go, God, today... Today I will learn a little bit more about you. Today I will respond a little bit more. He knows the secret desires of your heart. He knows what's going on inside. And what's, what's really most magnificent is that he created you. And he has your blueprint. And some of us have been walking around in circles, trying to figure things out on our own, 
when the guy who made the blueprint is telling you, hey, do it this way. I have a secret passage. But we keep spinning and, and hitting the door, and we can't see, right? We don't know what's, what's ahead. And so we keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. I've said this before, but you know that's insanity. Definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Right? So 2019 is almost upon us. We are a few days away. And I want to encourage you that if you want to see change, if you want to see things look differently, then do some things differently. Do some things differently. Engage with God in a different way. Follow Jesus. Respond to Jesus. If you will do that, if you will commit your life to following Jesus, you, even if you say, you know what, I'm going to do this for 2019. I want to see if this is true. Do it. 2019, say, you know what, I'm going to do this for one year. If it's not true, I'm walking away. I challenge you, do it. I promise you, you this, the year that you commit to God will look so different at the end, you could have not have made that happen on your own. Because that's who he is. He is a God who loves you, who wants to see you progress. He is holy, magnificent, and good, and righteous in all the things that you want in your life and sometimes don't know how to achieve it. That's who God is. So I'm going to end this morning. I'm going to ask that every eyes will close and every...